Let's turn our Bibles to book of 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. We're going to look at verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. The title of the message is, Are You Ready for the End? Are you ready for the end? 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. The Bible says, But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Brother Richard, can you please pray for the message? Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you that we get to gather here today, Lord, at a Bible-believing King James Church. Uh, thank you, Lord, for your truth and your word, the King James Bible. Father, we pray that you please fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit, that he may preach unto us, Lord, what we need to hear. Help us, Lord, Amen. each and every one of us, to not think of the worldly matters, anything that may may withhold us from seeking you, Lord God. Help us to open our hearts and keep our ears attentive to the words that, that you'll be using through Pastor Jay. Father, please fill each and every one of us here with your Holy Spirit and also the members online, Lord. And for any of the members that's not able to be here, Lord, we pray that you bless them and comfort them with the Holy Spirit. And Father, we thank you for your only begotten Son, Lord Jesus, for the precious blood that you shed on the cross at Calvary that atones for all of our sins, past, present, and future. Thank you for the free gift of eternal salvation, nothing that we have to do on our end um, to get into heaven, Lord. It was all done by you, Lord Jesus Christ, and we thank you that we don't ever have to be burning in hell nor in the lake of fire. We thank you. Thank you for your promise. Thank you for sealing us with the Holy Ghost until the day of redemption. We pray, Father, in all of this, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Are you ready for the end? Each one of us should live our each lives with that one single thought in our mind, thinking about the end. If you don't think about the end, you tend to stray away from a lot of the issues of life. When people are not thinking about the end, what they do is that they just do whatever they feel like to do. They let the flesh, the devil, and the world just control them. They feel like meeting everybody. They just do it. They feel like doing this wicked stuff. They just do it. They don't think about the end. You know, if you think about Las Vegas, you know, Sin City, a lot of wicked things going on over there. You know, there's gambling, you know, there's prostitution and everything. When those people are there, they say, you know, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. You know, that's a false. That's a lie. Why? Because many people will gamble their life savings away. They gamble their house away. They gamble everything away. And does that stay in Vegas? No, it follows them throughout their lives. Yes. And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, in Vegas, I could do whatever I want. You know, you start sleeping with prostitutes. You know, you sleep with, around with everybody. And then you're like, oh, yeah, it just stays there. No, you weren't thinking about the end. You come out, you know, your marriages are broken, your relationships, relationships are broken. You get unwanted diseases and everything going on. Why? Because people don't think about the end, right? When people get road rage, they don't think about the end. You know, people who have dealt with road ragers, or if you're a road ragers yourself, you know, you do really, really stupid things. You know, some people you know, take out their guns, right? Yep. Yes. And then sometimes they shoot at people. Yes. And one time, you know, over there around, you know, Orange Coast and Mesa area, you know, because someone just, you know, drove not according to their liking, they just took out a gun and shot at the car. Oh. And a little kid died. Yeah. And those two couple will be spending many years in jail mm -hmm. just for that. Because people don't think about the end. And a lot of times, 
people just don't think about the spiritual end. And especially this day and age, people don't think about hell, right? right? Yeah. Hell isn't preached on the pulpit, right. right? Jesus Christ preaches about hell more than heaven, right. a lot more, right? At least double, right? Yes. Then on the pulpits of the country, people should be preaching about hell. Amen. Why? Millions and billions of people are going to hell. Right. Yes. If you are thinking about your end, you know, musks and bezels and everybody out there, you'll be thinking about hell. A lot of times they don't want to think about hell. That's why they want to go out to the space. They want to live forever. But you can't live forever, right? right? Look, yeah. ask Steve Jobs, right? Mm -hmm. He died because of cancer. You know, no money in the world can you, can it make you, you know, live longer than what God already set you out, exactly. right. right? Then you have to think about the end. You know, in order to be ready for the end, you know, you have to prepare, right? Are you ready? You know, you have a dinner party and you're the host. You have to be ready. Yes. How? By being prepared. You know, you have to prepare food, you have to prepare the settings and everything. As Christians, I'm not sure if you are thinking about that end, right? When we look at the verse in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7, but the end of all things at hand. You know, you know general epistles, especially looking at it, verse 7 is a reference to the end of tribulation. However, there's also an application to church age. Christians like you and I. He's talking about the rapture. You know, Peter gives us instructions how to be prepared for the rapture. That's our end, right? But if Lord tarries, some of us, you know, will go back to the ground, yes. to the dust, right? And are you ready for that end? You are so busy with things of the world. You're so busy, you know, with the affairs of life. You don't really think about the end. When people don't think about the end, they don't really think about Lord Jesus Christ. No. I mean, when you're, you, you can't tell me that, you know, my priority is Jesus Christ. And when you don't even think about the end, my priority is Jesus Christ. You don't think about hell. My priority is Jesus Christ. You don't think about heaven. Your priority is Jesus Christ. But nothing spiritual you don't think about during daily lives, right? You know, we had summer camp, you know. And afterwards, how many of you guys still have that zeal and love and commitment that you had on the mountain top experience? You're down in the valley. That's how you made the decisions. You made decisions that, you know what, I'm going to be ready for the end every single day. You don't know when Lord's going to come back, but the end is near. Amen. I mean, Lord could come back right now. I mean, do you want the Lord to come back right now? Yeah. Right? Because some people will be like, you know, I haven't done much for the Lord. So I don't want Lord to come back. You're a fool, yeah. right? I mean, the Lord needs to come back right now. Look yeah. at what's happening in the world, right? We just saw what happened in Russia. I don't know what that farce was all about, right? You know, the guy invades Russia, you know, one of Putin's close allies in the past. And then within 24 hours, they have a peace treaty, and it was done. You know, the world was upside down. They thought, you know, this guy was going to take over Moscow, and there's going to be, you know, bloodshed, you know, there's going to be takeover. No. I mean, thankfully, not many people die, you know, if at all. But, you know, the world is just going crazier and crazier. Yes. Right? Even you look back, even a year, two years ago, you know, when pandemic started, I mean, everything was like standstill, everything, the whole world's going down. People were losing businesses and jobs, right? I mean, they weren't prepared for that, no. right? But spiritually speaking, you and I have to be ready for the end. That means that you need to be thinking about the rapture, right? Yes. I mean, how often do you think about Lord to come back on a daily basis? Amen. I mean, that is a crown of righteousness every Christian should be receiving, at the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. That's right. You know, there are five crowns, but there's one that you have to be receiving, especially if you've been coming to our church for many, many years, right? You know, pastors have told you, you know what? You know, this one crown, you can't miss. All you have to do is expect Lord Jesus Christ to come today. Expect him to come today. I mean, live your life expecting him to come today. 
That's why people have a miserable Christian life. Yeah. Because they're not ready for the end. When, again, readiness equals preparedness. So you're not prepared. So you're living a very, very shameful Christian life. I mean, without saying, right, you don't pray enough, you don't witness enough, you don't read your Bible enough, you know, you don't show much charity enough to your family, to the lost world out there. I mean, there's a lot of things that you don't do because you're not ready for the end. There needs to be urgency, right? There's got to be urgency. You know what? I'm going to live today like my last day. You know, how many of you really live your day like the last day, right? If you knew that you're going to die tomorrow, then you're going to do everything you can to serve the Lord to your best ability. Instead of wasting your time on social media, instead of wasting time on the, you know, TV, instead of wasting time on, you know, needless stuff, you probably will be reading some of the Bible that you've neglected for many, many years. Yes. You're going to be praying on your knees that you haven't done for many, many years. And you have, you'll be witnessing to all your loved ones that you know for sure aren't saved yes. because today is your last day. Amen. People who are ready for the end, they live today like their last day. Right? How do you know that you're going to wake up tomorrow? How do I know I'm going to wake up tomorrow you know, without the grace and mercy of God? Amen. It's so simple. Like when you're sleeping, you're like in a dead state. And then somehow you just wake up, right? I mean, that's, that's you know, amazing grace from God. Amen. But if God says your time is up, what are you going to do, right. right? And especially if you're saved, are you going to be like, oh, Lord, you know, why would you take me home? I could have done more for you. Really? You haven't done anything for me for the past days, months, and years, and suddenly you're going to do something for me? I mean, you are such a bad testimony for me. People who wanted to get saved, who wanted to come to knowledge of truth, said no because of your lifestyle, Amen. because of who you were. I mean, we, he, we say this many, many times. You're the only Bible. You're the only Lord Jesus Christ. Unsaved world sees out there. True. I mean, if you talk like them, if you act like them, and if you think like them, there's no difference. Right. I mean, if any one of us, because we only see each other, you know, many times, church settings only, right? Yes. But if we were to see you outside of church, you ought to be different yes. from your co-workers, from other families, you know, from just a general public. You ought to be different, right? Amen. You, your conversation, both coming out of your mouth and your action, should be different. Yes. If they're cussing, you shouldn't be cussing, right? right? If they're angry for no good reason, you shouldn't be angry. Right? You shouldn't be greedy if they're greedy. I mean, just on and on. If they're full of anger and hate, you should be full of charity. You literally have to be opposite of how the world, the devil, and the flesh is acting. Amen. Then, if we were to do a survey, every single person here, you know, just random survey of the people that, who you interact with, right? Because some of you go to school, some of you work, you know, some of you have, you know, friends and family. And they were like, okay, you know, scale of, you know how they, all the surveys are? Either scale of one to five or they go bigger, like one to ten, right? You know, how much of a Christian do you see, you know, in this person? And then you have all this list of categories, right? You know, while they're driving, while they're, you know, having a coffee break, right? You know, while they're working, you know, while they're eating, you know, blah, blah, everything. Because some of you guys don't pray before you eat yeah. when you're outside of church. I mean, what's wrong with that? Or are you not thankful for the food when you're outside of church? Come on. You know, you're only praying because we have a group prayer, wow. right? And then you have to close your eyes and put your head down or else you look disrespectful. 
I mean, no etiquette, right? But outside of it, even for a few seconds, I mean, do you give thanks to God for your food? I mean, who, who cares what people think, right? Yeah. You close your eye, put your head down, and pray. Amen. I mean, or, I mean you, people even just stutter and say it out loud, right? Yeah. right? Lord, you know, Lord God, thank you for this food, you know, in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. You just do it, yes. right? I mean, every other religion does it. Yeah. I mean, some religion, they do it five times a day, <laughs> right? Some religions just stand out there, you know, with their literature all day. I mean, they have a table somewhere, and then they just want people to talk to them. They love representing what they believe in. Why is it that in this watered-down country, especially when it comes to Christianity, you know, people don't want to stand up for it? Why? Because they're not ready for the end. You know, people who are not ready for the end, you just want to enjoy the moment, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, my coworker said, hey, let's go happy hour, right? You don't have to drink or anything, right? Just be there. Man, and suddenly, you know, you come out in every single social media, you know? You have a cup of water, but it looks like, you know, alcohol, right? And then, man, your testimony is ruined, you know? Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil. You don't need to be at a place when you don't need to be there, right? I mean, a lot of times, those things, they can force you. I mean... At my work, they can't force me to go to happy hour. Yeah. I'll just say, no, I don't go. That's it. But if you want to f- save your face, you say, you know what, I need to go further in, in my career, and I need to meet these people, I need to mingle with these people, blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's all, everything is just what you want. That's not what God wants. I mean, that's not going to please Lord Jesus Christ because you don't think about the end. You're just thinking about the present, this little present, that, present day that you're living. Okay, you know, I need to get promoted, you know. Yeah. And then what's the reason for promotion? I don't know, right? Many people want to get promoted to just to show off, right? You know, I want this title. You know what? Then start your own company <laughs> with a salary of like 100 bucks per month, right? Yeah. To yourself, you know. I'm the president of, you know, ABC Enterprise, right? I'm the CEO, I'm the founder. You know, and make your business card. You know, if that's going to make you happy, right? Pass him out. Hey, you know, I'm the president and CEO, you know? I mean, that's such a foolish thing. Too many Christians are just running after, you know, worldly things. Yeah. That's why you don't think about the world at all. I mean, you don't think about, I mean, the end at all. You know, you're not ready for the end, right? You're just out there, just busy with things of the world. Your mind is not about the mind of Christ, right? You don't have no truth inside of you much. You don't read the Word of God too much. You don't act upon the Word of God too much, you know. And then you just let the world control you. This world system control you. You let the God of this world just constantly control you over and over and over. And then at the end of the day, what do you get out of it? I mean, did you have a fruitful week this week? I mean, what was it? Did you get closer to the Lord Jesus Christ? Did you read the Bible more than before? Were you on your knees more than before? Were you passing out the tracts or are you, you know, preaching the gospel to people more? You're not ready for the end, right? You're just ready for your own life. You're just ready for, you know, the destruction that's going to come your way. If the Lord says, just like that. You have to remember, Lord God controls everything. Amen. I could be a billionaire, billionaire right now. Lord says, you know, I want you to, you got to be poor tomorrow. You gotta, you, I got to teach you some, you know, humility lesson, right? Yeah. Then, you know, I mean, the bank goes, bank just disappears, you know, where all my money is, right? <laughs> or like some platform or exchange just disappears. Like things been happening recently, right? Yes. Yeah. Or you have like you're running a business and suddenly, you know, there's a lot of bad reviews and no one ever comes to your, you know, business anymore. It's up to God, right? Yeah. That's why you have to think about, you know, if you're ready for the end. Then in order to be ready for the end, point number one, you know, you need to have urgency to do your best wherever you are. That's it. You need to have urgency to do your best wherever you are. Because many times, 
People don't have urgency. Many times, people don't do their best. As Christians, whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto man. You have to do your best wherever you are. You can't be telling God, God, I'm just a member of the church. But if you make me a Sunday school teacher, I'm going to do better. You know? you know what, God? You know, I don't, I only go on Sunday, but you know what? You know, if you give me this promotion, I'm going to do better. Like, I mean, nothing against people, you know, outside. You know, you know what? If I'm at a different church, I'm going to do better. You, know, you hear that all the time, right? You know, you, know, you know, our church is not that hospitable. You know, our church, you know, people gossip. Our church, you know, people look at the wrong way, you know. Our church, you know, pastors don't say hi to me all the time, shake my hand, hug me, you know, and then pray with me all the time, you know. You know, <laughs> all those things going on. They're like, then, you know what? If I were at a different place, I know I'm going to do better for the Lord. I mean, that's the biggest fool. I mean, that's, you deceived yourself from your own heart, right. right? If you don't have urgency to do your best wherever you are, wherever you're sitting, then you'll never do best anywhere else, mm -hmm. right? People say, you know what? You know, those CEOs, those executives at a company, they don't do much, you know? They just sit there, you know, count their money and stuff. You know, but they are there, you know, without, you know, unless, you know, they inherited something. You know, they're there because of hard work, yes. because they have effort. Yes. You know, they work hard, all right, wherever they are. If they were out in the trenches digging ground, they're working hard. If they were in the office, they're working hard, right? And they go up the rankings just like that. It yes. just doesn't happen, you know, just because of, you know, people call it a luck or something. That doesn't work like that in the real world, no. right? So as Christians, wherever you are, inside the church, if your job is to come and listen to the word, you do your best. Yeah. If your job is to teach, you do your best. Amen. If your job is to preach, you do your best. If your job is to you know, obey as a child, you have to do your best. Amen. You can't expect to be like, you know what? I'm just going to be a pastor. Go ahead, man. You know, Bible-believing pastor is like the hardest thing in the world, right? You know, I think I could do a better job, right? You know, I'm going to preach better. I'm going to lead people better. You know, I, you know, blah, 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 right? Hey, you know what? Just take my place for like a month, right? Let's see how it goes, right? You know? So you have to understand, wherever you are, God put you there, and you have to do your best, Amen. right? Yes. You can't be like, you know what? I have to be in a be different country that I'm going to do my best. If you're not doing good and your best in your own country right now, how do you expect yourself to do best at a different country? I mean, people have this false idea, yes. right? You have to get rid of it as Christians. You know, wherever you are, you just have to do your best. Right? And then God put you there. Instead of saying, God, you know, help me to escape from this all the time. Help me to move out of this. Just ask God for perseverance. Ask God for endurance to get through it. You have to get through troubles and trials in your life to gain experience and it, so that you could have hope, right? So that you could have patience yeah. instead of trying to run away from everything. People who do not have urgency to do their best wherever they are, they are always lazy. Yes. Common characteristic is they're lazy. They're just lazy bums, right? You know, they, they don't want to do much. They want everything to, to be handed to them. As Christians, you can't have that kind of attitude. No, sir. You can't have that kind of mindset. Amen. You know, you got to, you know, drop some sweats. Yes. Yeah, you got to, you know, you got to just move around something, right? Amen. And you got to put some work. Yeah. And you got to, you know, I mean, at the summer camp, Pastor Stevenson, and I was preaching, you know, about, you know, George Mueller, you know, praying. Or was it Brother Gorski, you know, just go check out their videos, right? You know, they, George Mueller prayed so much, you know, there were marks on the wooden floor. I mean, can you believe it? You pray there so much, 
And that way to have is making marks, right? Damn. I mean, if we were to go to your places, right, can we even find a place where you pray, Never. right? I mean, uh, forget about dustiness, right? You can't find it, all right? Also, where do you pray, brother? Where do you pray, sister? Uh, I pray in my mind, you know? And people always, I pray in my mind. I mean, I pray on my bed, you know? That's not a real prayer. I mean, our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, had drops of blood, sweating, on his knees praying, yes. right? I mean, he's our example. I mean, he's inside of you and me. Amen. I mean, what, in the Bible, then, whenever people, they were on their, on their knees and faces down to the ground, you know, you know, praying to God, is that not the right way to pray? Of course, that's the right way to pray. I mean, it shows humility. It also keeps you alert, right? And as a Christian, you and I are so blessed. You know, Holy Spirit intercedes for us, right? Lord Jesus Christ prays for us. I mean, the creator of the universe is praying for you and me. And if we don't have anything to pray, we just get on our knees. Holy Spirit just intercedes for us. Amen. Come on. I mean, so you don't get on your knees, then nothing's going to work. If you're not praying on your knees, you're not ready for the end. You're not doing your best wherever you are. At home, everybody, right? Everyone lives in a home here. At home, are you doing your best? Right? As a father, as a mother, as husband, as wife, you know, as child, grandma, grandpa, are you doing your best at home? I mean, if husbands do not love their wife like they should, your prayer is not going to be answered. Amen. Right? Yeah. And wives, you don't submit your husbands, prayer is not going to be answered. Children, if you don't obey your parents, for this is right in the Lord, prayer is not going to be answered. You're not going to be ready for the end if you don't do as what you ought to do at your home. Then husbands, love your wife. Like Christ has loved the church, right? You have to do it first. I mean, don't expect your wife to submit to you first, right? Yeah. It doesn't work like that. In a biblical way, it's always Lord Jesus Christ, right? And above that, there's Father God, and there's you know head of the household, right? And there's mothers, and there's children. You can't expect children to you know obey and follow a father when they neglect their mothers. You can't expect children to, you know, submit to their mom if she doesn't submit to their husband. And I'm talking about godly husband, right? Yeah. You know, we're not talking about white beaters, you know, people who's alcoholic, you know, no. who's intoxicated all the time. You know, we're not talking about those, you know, godly parents, right? Because, I mean, our text verse says that you have to be sober, right? Yeah. You know, sober not only talking about, you know, being drunk and intoxicated. He's talking about being serious. Because we're at the end. We just don't know when. But the times are telling us yes. you have to be serious Amen. about this spiritual business. I mean, as they say, right, cliches everywhere. It's serious business, right? Yes. You know, you hear that all the time, right? You know, in a relationship, it's serious business. You know, at work, it's serious business, right? When you're even playing you know, whether it's sports or whatnot, you're saying it's serious business. But when it comes to your relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, doing best at wherever you are, especially at home, inside the church, in the ministry, it's not serious business. You're not sober. You're not vigilant. You're lukewarm. I mean, the common characteristic of Laodicean age, you're just lukewarm, right? You don't really care, right? You're like, blah, 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 someone else is going to do it. Are oh, you that tough of a person all the time? You know, someone else will do it. I mean, what a lazy attitude, you know, at home. You know what, my child, my children, or my wife will do it. Lazy husbands, right? You know, lazy wives. Yeah, everybody else will do it, right? Lazy children. You know, my parents will do it all the time. I mean, there's like no diligence within, you know, not just normal, but in a Christian family nowadays. 
Everybody wants to just try to get away with it as much as possible, right? You know, I, you can't be that person, you know, when there's like a church cleaning, you know, you go to the bathroom, right? Ah, yeah, not to clean the bathroom, you know, but you want to spend some time in the bathroom, right? Out of the, all the times of the day, right, for a few of you, a few of people, right, you're always, your stomach always hurts during, you know, church ministry times, right? When it's time to clean, you know, when it's time to go out there, preach, when it's time to go out there and witness, like, oh, yeah, my stomach always hurts. You know who does that? Little babies do that, right? <laughs> babies like, oh, you know, I don't feel good. So I can't do it, mommy. I can't do it, daddy. I mean, how long will you stay as a Christian baby? Yeah. I mean, some of you have been saved for a long, long time. <laughs> but instead of growing spiritually, you're still the same or worse. Yeah. Can you imagine it could get worse, right? You had that first love. You're gung-ho. You're like out there, you know, serving the Lord for a one month. And then after that, for the past 10, 15 years, five years, you know, like you don't do anything, right? And then when you hear someone glorify God, when you hear someone thank God for the lost souls being saved, right? People, their lives is getting right in the Lord, you know, you become jealous and envious. Uh, I'm like, oh, man, you know, I hope they stop talking about it. They're just, you know, proud. They're showy. <laughs> Do you guys ever feel like that? I mean, there are certain cases like that, right? But when someone from bottom of their heart giving their testimony in front of brethren, giving glory to God, yeah. are you that type of person so miserable? You know, you're so lazy in your Christian walk. You're so jealous and envious. All your thoughts in mind is, man, when would they ever stop talking? You know? If they talk for 60 seconds, you're like, oh, that's too long. <laughs> you know? like, when would they stop giving glory to God? You know? You're like, if I was to stand up and give testimony, I would give a better speech. Wow. You know? I would get more applause. You know? And I would be more shiny. But you don't, you never raise your hand, right? Because you got nothing to glorify God for. Because you're such in a backslidden state, you're like, ah, you know, I just want my flesh to feel good, you know? And many times then you ask yourself, I mean, why do you even take some time out of your, you know, life to be where you are, right? I mean, but there's, Always hope, though. That's the best thing about, you know, Christianity, this church age. There's hope. You're sealed with the Holy Ghost. So you either grieve the Holy Ghost or you please the Holy Ghost. Amen. And when you grieve the Holy Ghost, he's going to give you conviction, right? Yes. To get right with the Lord. You have Lord Jesus Christ inside of you, right? And... You have a direct connection to God the Father, right? You could talk to Him, communicate with Him. You don't have to go through a, you know, false fathers out there. Yeah. In a, you know, dark, dinky room out there, you know, telling your secrets to a human being. No, you go straight to God. Yeah. Then whatever, wherever you are, you know, whether you're here, People's listening, if you're in Korea, Japan, if you're in Europe, Australia, you know, Africa, you know, other parts of America, South America, North America, wherever you are, whether you have pastor or not, right? Whether you want a different job or not, whether you want to marry someone or not, you just got to do your best. Yeah. Just do your best. And don't get this false, you know, sense of idea that, oh, yeah. America is the best, so I have to go to America no matter what. I mean, ask the folks here. It's the same everywhere, right? I mean, thank God that we live in the greatest country where, you know, we can still have the freedom to preach the Word of God Amen. out on the streets, right, and pass our tracks, you know, freely. If you're not in America and you're in those communistic countries, you know, we've got, we're going to pray for you, right? You know, it's, yeah. it's a sad situation. But... 
if you could still preach the gospel wherever you are, you could read the Bible freely, you know, and all those things, just do best where you are, right? And then Lord will open the doors where you need to be. And that's why people always forget that Lord's looking for people who's faithful in little things, right? Just little tiny things, right? I mean, do you put your time in each day to spend time with Jesus Christ? Amen. Do you pass out the tracks whenever you have opportunity, right? Do you really love the lost souls on their way to hell? Amen. Because if you're not faithful in little things, forget it. Amen. Why would God use you for bigger things, <laughs> right? I mean, if you're a CEO of a company and you've been observing you know, the workers inside your company, and this, you know, employee A, you know, even refilling the water jug, they do it faithfully, you know, they never let the water drop a certain point, right? But you see employee B, they only move when people start asking for water, right? Hey, where's the water? I'm thirsty, right? And then you give attitude, wait, man. Don't you know how heavy the water jug is? Just wait. Stop complaining. Bring your own water, right? And if you are the CEO, who do you think you will give more responsibility to? Who do you think you will give more rewards to? I mean, as Christians, you're like that employee B. You only react and you only move when water runs out, when people start complaining, right? Do you have to wait until your wife, your husband, your children, your grandma, grandpa, your co-workers, your friends have to point something out for you to move when it's obvious things? I mean, if you don't even pray in front of your family, I mean, what kind of role model are you? And don't say, you know what, you know, I'm too humble. Inside of your home, Someone's going to see you sometime doing something when you're not looking, especially for years and years and years. And if they've never seen you pray, then you don't pray. Don't lie and be like, you know what, I, I go into my closet, you know, I lock the door. You know, I have a, like a three latches over there so that no one could ever bother me when I'm praying. You don't. I mean, you wake up. You know, get on your knees and pray to God. Amen. I mean, the, whether it's dawn, whether it's, you know, you know, high noon, you know, right before you sleep, right? Yes. That's where children learn from their parents. Amen. Children, you know what? You know, sometimes I don't agree with my parents, but, you know, they do spend time with the Lord on their knees in prayer, you know. And then as they grow up, they remember that. They appreciate that. And they do the same. And their children learn. And generation after generation, you have a praying family. But all you do is do a five-second prayer, you know, dinner table. You watch your stuff, whether it's TV, computer, you know, your cell phone. And you just go straight to bed, right? And that's all your children see. Your children will never say you're a you know, man of prayer or a woman of prayer. And they don't, they'll never think that prayer is important. What does the Bible say? We looked at. But the end of all things at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. I mean, second and last point is, right? Do you have urgency to pray? I mean... It's simple. Do you pray always? Bible says pray without ceasing. I mean, you just got to pray. I mean, do you pray enough? We should never say, I pray enough. Yeah. Because we don't pray 24-7. Right. But do you pray at every opportunity? I mean, it's uh, one of the hardest questions and toughest questions to say yes to. I mean, do you pray like you should pray? I mean, no. I could pray better. Yeah. Man. 
And it's the position too, again. Don't expect to pray the same unless you have a bodily, you know, ailment. Like when you're, you're not on your knees and praying, right? There's a reason why, you know, forefathers of faith, you know, people, you know, faith, you know, they pray on their knees, right? They're praying to Almighty God. They're praying. They're just praying. When was the last time you prayed for more than five minutes? Right? Five minutes. It's like you watch commercials for five minutes all the time. Right? You watch a show, five minutes goes by super fast. All the commercials. When you're talking to someone, five minutes goes by very fast. Right? And if, especially if you're talking about a topic that you like. Whether it's politics, sports, religion, world news. Five minutes goes by very fast if you're talking about something that you like. But man, when it comes to prayer, you don't have any urgency. You start complaining, your knee's hurting, and you've been, you know, kneeling down for 30 seconds. Or some people just fall asleep. But that's better, though. I mean, you're, you're practicing. You're practicing, right? We have, you know, some of the young, young kids, you know, praying. And, you know, if our Wednesday prayer is more than, like, 15, 20 minutes, right? You know? They're tired. They had a long day. You know, they, they're in the right position to fall asleep, right? But as, you know, grown up and young adults and adults, right? You can't be acting like that in your prayer life. If there's urgency, and if as if Lord's looking down on you, looking at you, standing next to you, you're going to have a proper position, and you're going to be alert. Yes. And you're going to be praying. And some people say, I don't know what to pray. Like I said, go to Romans chapter 8, right? Read those verses 26, 27. Holy Spirit will intercede for you. Lord Jesus Christ praying for you. And one of the reasons you can't stay that long, because you don't read the Bible. So you don't know the Lord too much. So you don't know what to talk about during prayer, right? You don't know his commands. You don't know what the stories in the Word of God is, right? So they're like, I don't know what to pray. That's on you. In order to have a better prayer life, read the Word of God. I mean, urgency to pray involves urgency to read the Word of God. I mean, God's speaking to you. You're speaking to God. Then, I mean, you can't be ready for the end. If you have urgency to do your best wherever you are, you have urgency to pray. And then all these things will just put in place. Then you'll be ready for the end. You're like preparing for the end. You're like, I understand when people say they want Lord Jesus Christ to come right now. I understand when people can wait for the rapture, right? I understand when people want to get rid of this, you know, fragile bodies once and for all and have the redeemed, glorified body, right? You're going to have more and more of desire to be with the Lord. You're going to understand what Apostle said before he went to be with the Lord, right? I mean, he's waiting for him to come back and come back. And that was a couple thousand years ago. Time has passed by. We're getting nearer and nearer and nearer, right? Yes. Apostle Paul, Apostle Peter, right? Then where should your mindset be? Your mindset should be in the Word of God, right? In the Lord doing your best, being prepared, and getting ready for the end. Not 10 years from now, not five years from now, on a daily basis. Without it, then you're just going to become a same old backslidden, good for nothing, you know, Jesus Christ, you know, destroying testifier once and for all. That's it. And then at the judgment seat of Christ, Lord will be playing. Wow, man. You've really done nothing for me 
Oh, man. I want to hear even a tiny bit of my life where the Lord says, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Yeah. Or are you going to be that wicked, wretched servant? Man, all you hear from the Lord is, I shed my precious blood for you. I gave everything for you, but you've done nothing. I mean, then you're like, you're like that parable, right? Where you get these towns and you get, Lord gives you opportunity to do something in your life and you don't do anything. And your excuse is, oh, you know, I just kept it. Then no, no, I'm just giving it back to you. No, you didn't. What you really did was destroy, you know, other people's faith. Destroy your family's faith. What you did was uh, literally be harm to the body of Christ, which you are part of. Man, that is the last thing I want to hear from my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Are you going to get ready for the end? I mean, there are no more excuses. I mean, how long are you going to say, until this happens, until this happens, until that happens, until that happens, you know, I'm going to change. You change right now. Yes. But you don't have to wait. I mean, literally, you have to change at this moment. Amen. Or else, it's going to continue that habit, that cycle of spiritual destruction along with physical destruction will continue. Let us never forget, you and I reap what we sow. Let's pray.